I've been asked to do a tutorial about five ball lift bouncing. So let's do it. I highly recommend silicon if you're going to get into bounce juggling. Um, I have seen videos where people use racquetballs uh, and they seem successful to me. They're a little light um, and you might have to do a little bit more of a kind of a lift in order to get the bounce that you want. I don't think lacrosse balls work very well unless you're going to be force bouncing. Um, all I can do is speak to you about what it's like to use these. So everything I say is based on that. In fact, if you try to apply what I say to any other prop, like tennis balls or racket balls or lacrosse balls or something like that, what I say may very well not be accurate. In addition to uh, the proper equipment, uh, you have to have the proper surface. Generally, I have found that wood does not work. Hardwood floors, stage floors, you got to be real careful. I practice on polished hard concrete, and that's ideal for me. It has to be a surface that's hard. If it has any give whatsoever, the bounce return is not going to work. Okay, in order to do five, uh, in order to work your way up to five, got to start with three. The three is pretty easy. I start with, for me, two on my right hand, one on my left. The same way I do a standard cascade juggle down here. Okay. I would do the same thing, except that now I'm going to let them fall. When you're doing three and four and, and five, you can start with your hands maybe a few inches above the waist. So here's my hip bone. I start maybe three inches above that. I want to get used to this, a light lift as I'm going to practice this pattern. It's a slow pattern, okay? And here's how you know when to throw the ball. When that ball hits the ground, that's the cue to lift throw the next one. Okay, so watch that again. Alright, in addition to the lift, I want to make sure I get used to where that ball is hitting. Alright, so, for example, I right now have my feet about shoulder width apart. I actually prefer them to be a little bit further than shoulder width apart. I also imagine that there's a line running straight down between my legs right here and my goal is to get the balls to land consistently from the right and the left and left to the right in, the route in roughly the same space. I have found it helpful not to have the ball land way out here in front of me, certainly not between my legs, but maybe I try to get them about four inches in front of my feet. So if this is a line here and here. All right, you feel pretty good about doing the three. Now it's time to move on to four. I warned you at this point, it's gonna get iffy. If you can get past this stage, you definitely got five. You're not gonna have any problems after this. At this point, I would also highly recommend you find some way to practice that avoids you having to chase these things all over creation. So here's my suggestion. Go out, get yourself some cheap fabric, take a corner uh, in a room, tack up a couple little hooks in the corner, one over here, one over here, string the fabric between them, and then put a couple of weights to make sure that the fabric stays close to the ground. That way when you practice, when they do get out of hand, you don't have to chase them all over a 16 by 20 foot room. Alright, here it is. In order to get you ready for a five ball cascade, I'm going to give you a four ball drill. If you can survive this, you'll have five ball cascade in probably a week, at most. Um, patience, patience, patience. This is the most irritating part. I'm going to be doing what I call a four ball chase. What it really is, is doing four balls in a five ball cascade. Let me demonstrate it first and then I'll break it down and show you uh, how this actually works. Alright, so here's how to do this drill. 
what I want to do is listen for a beat, okay? Um, you're going to do a release with the right hand, and then as this one is on its way down, before it hits the ground, you're going to release the left hand one. A little bit of a hop, a little bit of a lift between, okay? Not this, but more of a more of a lift up so that it's actually got, you're giving it a little bit of an arc. So I'm going to go right, left. I just do that part. Right, left. Right, left. Right, left. Okay, you want them to be not simultaneous, but right, left. That's going to get you ready for what it's like when you do five. Again, watch where those balls land. Try to get them to land consistently wherever you want. But I want to make sure when I catch them, my hands stay relatively still. If I'm doing a good job of placing those balls, then I don't have to move my hands way out here. If I'm doing a lot of this kind of stuff to find those balls, uh, here, but then sometimes in here, then I need to go back and work on just this. I would rather them move out and back a little bit to catch them than this, okay? Outside like this, I don't think it's good. Here's better. So I'm going to go right, left, left, right. Right, left, left, right. Right, left, left, right. So it's right, left. Then when the right one, the first one thrown, has hit the ground, that's when you release the left. So it's right, left, left, right. Right, left, left, right. That's the pattern. Listen to the pattern. And notice, I've got a pretty consistent rhythm. I can hear it. And my hands are not having to move a whole lot to deal with where the balls are. Okay, believe it or not, doing the five after that four ball drill is cake. Yes, there are more props. But the nice thing is, now you're not going to have to deal with that herky-jerky kind of rhythm. ba da ba 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 da ba ba What you're going to have is a nice steady sound of five balls um, hitting the ground. To do the five, you've got to get used to the release of the three. So again, hands at the proper position. I'm going to do work just first of all on this. That part's going to feel pretty quick. Because I have to have all three out of my hand really before any, of, any one of them hits the ground. Again, notice, I'm not really throwing them in order to let them bounce. I'm doing a little bit of a lift. Okay, when you've got that, and they have hit the ground and come back up where you want them to be, not like over here, whoa, nothing like that, when that's a command, then you're just going to have to go for it, and you're going to do the flash of five. The same timing that you use to release the three, you're now going to use to release all five. So here goes the flash. And just stop. Okay, get the five down. Make sure they're landing where you want. Make sure they come back up where you want. Do that, say, ten times. Get that real confident. Then go for, say, seven or eight throws. Okay, drill that. If that feels promising, then you want to do uh, try a, a longer run. Honestly, that's about it. Um, I'm not trying to shortchange this, but all you're going to have to do is practice it. I will tell you this, um, the last hint that I can give. It's real easy to get antsy nervous almost about bouncing these things. Uh, you know, don't. Breathe deep, listen for a steady pattern, a steady rhythm, and use that to tell you how quickly or too slowly maybe you're throwing and releasing the balls. Breathe deep, tell yourself you can do this. Make sure your hands are not having to move a whole lot. and you'll be just fine.